Welcome to today's Postgres conference webinar, What Next in Logical Replication. We're joined by Amit Kapila, who will discuss the basic architecture of logical replication in Postgres, and then cover the various ways in which it can be helpful to others, including new enhancements and improvements related to logical replication that are currently being discussed in the Postgres QL community for future releases. My name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. A little bit about your speaker. Amit is a committer and major developer in PostgreSQL. Over the course of a 20-year career, he's developed deep expertise in not only Postgres, but also Oracle and in-memory databases. He works at Fujitsu as a senior director. Welcome, and with that, I'll hand it off. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Amit Kapila. I work with PostgreSQL open source community as Postgre committer. Uh, I work for major features, uh, development of major features, and I, I participate as an author, reviewer, and committer in the community. Uh, and I work as a senior director in Fujitsu. Today, I am here to present uh, you about logical replication. Like, what next in uh, logical replication you can expect uh, in PostgreSQL? So the basic agenda of this presentation is that I will first start with logical replication basics. Then I will go into some use cases for the same. Then I would like to highlight the key features developed for PostgreSQL 14, which is due release uh, in September or so. And uh, then I will uh, talk about uh, what could be there in PostgreSQL 15 and beyond. One thing to note here is, that PostgreSQL 14 work is yet not released and community is entitled to revert or uh, you know, change uh, some feature which is getting released. And PostgreSQL 15 is still uh, just started. So all this is based on uh, what I could see being proposed in the community at this stage, but nothing is promised uh, what could be done for PostgreSQL 15. So uh, to start with, Logical replication is a method to uh, replicate the data selectively, unlike physical replication where data of the entire cluster is copied. So it works basically on the publish and uh, subscribe, uh, subscribe model. Like one node will publish its data and other nodes uh, can subscribe to it and receive all that data. The node on which publication is defined, we usually refer it as publisher. And the node where subscriptions are defined, uh, we usually call it as subscriber or subscribers. So uh, then we could also allow to build the cascaded uh, replication uh, system here, where the data pulled by subscribers from the publishers can be republished and uh, it can be allowed to fetch by other subscribers. In general, the subscriber database behaves as any other PostgreSQL instance and can define its own set of publications. Now, let me try to define uh, what is publication and subscription. A publication is a set of changes generated from a table or group of tables. And in future, it could be group of objects like uh, sequences or for schema like this. So pu basically publication is a way uh, to generate the set of changes for a defined group of objects. And each object or table could be added to multiple publications if required. And then we can also uh, define which combination of operations or which operations data we need, like uh, insert, update, delete, truncate. We can either want the data for uh, all the operations or we can, uh, you know, uh, define which operations data we need on the subscribers. A, subscri a subscription can subscribe to multiple publication at in and it initiates the connection to the publication node. One of the things we have to note is that we don't have DDL replication uh, at this stage, which means schema definitions are not replicated. And users need to manually 
create uh, the schema on each of the subscriber nodes. So the object here we are talking table must match on both sides using a fully qualified names to allow replication. Here fully qualified names means uh, the schema in which it is defined should match also uh, on both sides and the columns also should match on both sides. So how the basic replication works is that uh, it starts by copying the initial snapshot of data from the publisher. And once the initial data is copied, the changes, the changes on the publisher uh, are sent to subscriber as they occur in real time. Basically, once we get the initial data, uh, which is there in the publisher before our replication starts, we get data change by change uh, based on each operation. Now, sometimes, uh, uh, as I have told you, subscriber is an independent node. Applying While applying the data on the subscriber can generate conflict if it violates any constraint like uh, primary key or uh, any null constraint or anything uh, like that, or any check constraint, sorry. So basically uh, it is quite possible that while we are replicating the row, uh, somebody on the subscriber has already uh, inserted that row, in which case it can violate some constraint. And as of now, a conflict will produce the error and the replication will be stopped. So such an error needs to be manually resolved at this stage. In future, we, we might want to build a system where uh, such uh, errors could be resolved automatically as well. So setup of logical replication is really, really very easy. Uh, the only thing uh, parameter you need to change is ball level logical equal to logical in PostgreSQL conf file, then start the server, connect to a database and create publication for required tables. The simple example is uh, with this command, create publication, uh, publication name, then the tables for which we want replication to happen. And then on the subscriber, no separate setting is required. You just connect to a database, create the subscription for required publication with a simple command like this. The above will allow the replication of users and departments table data to the subscriber node. So uh, here I have given the example of one publication and one subscription, but there could be multiple publications as I have told, and one subscription can subscribe to all the publications, which internally means all the tables or the objects publicized by those publications will be replicated on the subscription. Now I'll briefly uh, mention about uh, the use cases for uh, logical replication. So it allows us to send the incremental changes in a single uh, database or a subset of a database to subscriber as they occur. And we can also consolidate multiple databases into a single uh, one, which could be used for analytical purposes, uh, OLAP databases kind of thing. And we can also replicate uh, between major versions of PostgreSQL, and we can give access to replicated data to different uh, groups of users. One could also imagine to build a read-only uh, or write uh, multi-master database based on this the logical replication. Next, I will talk about key features uh, in PostgreSQL 14, the release which we are expecting uh, to come in September uh, or so. So the one of the major features we have developed for PostgreSQL 15 is to allow the streaming of in-progress transactions. Prior to this, for large transaction, there is always a big apply lag as we only uh, replicate the transactions at the commit time. 
so if the transaction is very large we don't start even sending the data to the subscriber till we encounter the commit so this will introduce a very big apply lag now because we uh, start streaming the data to the subscriber uh, after a certain memory threshold uh, this allows us to send incremental uh, data for a transaction on the subscriber so how it helps is that earlier the data of large transactions were spilled to disk even when we don't need it so this feature uh, saves a lot of uh, disk io required for such uh, transactions for example uh, the transaction could contain the data of multiple tables and one of those tables is not even uh, publicized so all that data will get rejected but uh, because we don't have a way to uh, find out the data gets accumulated and we need to spill it to disk so this feature saves a lot of disk io required for such transactions the performance improvement is proportional to the data of such transactions we have seen the performance improved by two or more times due to uh, this feature for large transactions and now uh, th this feature also adds a uh, various apis to the output plugin so so that not only the built in logical replication but the users of the decoding uh, output plugin or the people who have written their own output plugin can also stream the in progress transactions so the main uh, apis are stream start and stop so each set of uh, changes are, are sent between uh, start and stop so say we are sending 10 changes so for each of uh, say there are total 100 changes and we decide to send them in chunk of uh, 10 so for each of the 10 changes there will be a stream start and stop so that the subscriber can recognize uh, the boundaries and it can accordingly take action for those uh, messages or changes similarly uh, we need to for Uh, the commit and abort we need to send stream abort and stream commit and then uh, for each of the change the message uh, the stream change api and stream message and stream truncate apis are introduced so th this is mostly about uh, this feature uh, which is the streaming of uh, large transactions so apart from this we have done a, a performance improvement in logical decoding where if a transaction contains a lot of ddls we improved the cpu usage and decoding performance of such transactions it has been observed during our test that decoding of a transaction containing a truncation of a table with 1000 partitions would be finished in 1 seconds whereas before this work it used to take 4 to 5 minutes so you can see how big difference this creates the basic idea was that instead of doing the invalidations uh, on each change we uh, do the invalidations at the uh, command level so this reduces the overall number of invalidations that uh, gets processed which helped us in improving the performance so uh, next uh, like while introducing this uh, features we also came across the uh, requirement where we want to allow user to see the performance of logical decoding like right now there is no way for the user to know uh, how many transactions are streamed uh, or how many are getting spilled so sometimes it is difficult for the user to see why it is taking so long a time to uh, allow users to uh, administrate the uh, logical decoding we have introduced a new view 
which is pg stat replication slots this will uh, contain one row per logical replication uh, slot showing uh, which will show the statistics about its usage so here there are two type of statistics one is spill statistics another is stream uh, statistics so i think i forgot to capture here uh, we also capture the total uh, bytes uh, that are sent so spill uh, stats tell us about the amount of data that gets spilled to disk uh, while we are decoding now why data gets spilled is we have a, a memory limit that if the changes crosses that memory limit we spill it to the disk and stream stats tell us that when the number of changes exceeds a uh, certain limit how much data we have streamed to the subscriber so yeah this is about uh, this view where users can uh, really administrate their uh, logical decoding performance then the other uh, key improvement uh, we have done is in the initial table synchronization if you remember i have told in the beginning of the presentation that the first step of logical replication is to initially synchronize the tables so the initial table synchronization involves copying the initial snapshot of table and then the table is brought up to a synchronized state with the main apply worker by applying individual changes so here while doing this all this work is done in a single transaction using temporary replication slot so this that mechanism has a uh, few drawbacks for example the whole for the whole duration of the copy and the sync in the table sync phase we will hold the wall till it is complete on the uh, publisher and any error during the sync phase will roll back the entire copy which is really very painful for large copies and then there is a risk of exceeding the cid limit because uh, even the multiple transactions get merged as a single transaction during this phase so we have uh, solved all these drawbacks uh by allowing multiple transactions in the table sync phase and by using permanent slots and origin to track the progress of table sync so this uh this work helped us to improve the uh table synchronization uh, mechanism as such users might not see uh, some user visible difference but uh, the some of the users who have large copies or large data table synchronizations might see these drawbacks uh, get removed so this is mainly about uh, this uh, you know improvement so next i will talk about we have also introduced a way to transfer the data in binary format among uh, logical replication nodes so the users need to provide an option while creating a subscription or it they can alter it afterwards so that the data from the publisher be sent in the binary format by default this option is false and the data is sent in the text mode also sorry even when this option is enabled only data types that have binary functions for send and receive will be transferred in binary and this mode is generally faster but it has a, a slight drawback that when we are doing cross version replication if the subscriber lacks binary uh, receive function for the data type the data transfer will fail uh, which users need to be aware of so yeah ne next uh, important thing is uh, 
in this release we are also going to allow decoding of prepared uh, transactions so uh, this also in a sense reduces the apply uh, lag for example earlier the transaction data is only sent at the commit time there could be a lot of uh, difference between prepare and uh, commit time uh, so users won't get the data till commit but with this feature they will receive they can receive the data at the prepare time and this will also allow the plugins to decipher decipher the transaction at prepare time and route it to another node if required so i will cover in future slides how this feature could be used to build uh, better uh, you know uh, sharding system or uh, a better uh, multi master system where uh, the uh, read only uh, data or the read only uh, queries could be scaled so some of the miscellaneous features uh, we have added in postgres equal 14 uh, related to logical replication are like we have added a new syntax to add and drop a particular publication earlier we don't have a way to add or drop one publication user needs to use the uh, whole list of publications which they want to keep as part of subscription while changing it and then we also enhanced our internal to get the messages a via pg output so we have provided a new option uh, messages to the pg output plugin this allows decoding messages that get generated via pg logical emit message this is useful for uh, pg output plugin users that use it for change data capture so this is mostly about uh, the features uh, which you will see as part of postgres sql 14 release for logical replication provided none of this uh, gets changed or reverted by community due to some reason but this uh, appears to be a very good list of features uh, which i think will help many uh, users of logical replication via postgres sql 14 next i will talk about some of the features which we are discussing in the community for postgres sql 15 which will happen next year but there is no uh, as such guarantee or any you know word from the community side that these all will be released by postgres sql 15 this is based on uh, my observation uh, on what is being discussed in the community so first we will allow the inbuilt solution of logical replication to stream prepared transaction as i have mentioned few slides back that uh, we have started allow decoding of prepared transactions in the postgres sql 14 in 15 we will see that those transactions are going to be streamed on the subscriber so uh, this will really help us to build a conflict free logical replication because now uh, if there is any conflict that happens on the subscriber while applying user can get a chance to roll back its transaction on the primary uh this will help us to support two phase commit via logical replication which i think is a very big win uh, aside from just supporting uh, aside from just uh, getting the benefit of apply lag now as i have mentioned earlier another use case with this one can imagine is to build a solution for scaling out reads because of two pc we can ensure that on subscribers we have all the data committed on the master so this means one can design a system where different nodes are owners of some set of tables and we can always get the data of those tables reliably from different nodes and uh, you know then we can have one external process that will route the reads accordingly the write can always happen on the master or the uh, publisher node 
then the next big feature uh, we are discussing is to allow the uh, publication of schema and sequences as of now users if they want to specify uh, publication for all the tables in the schema they need to specify it one by one but with this new, excuse me but with this new option for all tables in schema users can actually uh, give the schema name and get the uh, replication for all the tables in that schema similarly for sequences and the beauty of this syntax is that users will be able to uh, mention the schema as well as uh, the tables uh, which are non uh, uh, schema specified so various objects could be uh, specified in a single publication with this syntax as well now allowing to publicize schema will help users to logically replicate all the tables in a particular schema and similarly once we allow the replication of sequences this will reduce the manual intervention by users where they need to keep uh, sequences in sync on the subscriber so i think this will be again a big step if we are able to achieve this for postgresql 15 the next uh, thing we are discussing from quite some time now is to allow logical replication from physical standby as of now if the publisher nodes goes down it is not easy to uh, set up the data from the uh, publisher node so if we allow the replication from physical standby users it can automatically uh, switch over to the standby physical standby and the replication will continue to work this will allow existing subscribers to connect to physical standby for existing publications and get the data and this feature will also provide a way to continue logical replication after the standby is promoted as master which is not possible as of now or user need to manually do multiple things to achieve this then the other feature uh, we are discussing is we call it as row filtering for logical replication so you can imagine that for any table while uh, specifying the publication users uh, can specify the where clause to uh, allow only those rows to be uh, filtered and sent to the subscription so this will help us to again uh, reducing Uh, uh to avoid sending uh, the data which is not uh, required by a subscriber or in other words we can say that this will help to further replicate the selective data and i think uh, this will also help in sharding the data at various nodes one can imagine that one table could be sharded to different nodes uh, using this uh, scheme now we are also discussing for the column filtering for logical replication so one can imagine a syntax where a particular table columns could be uh, mentioned and we will just send those columns data this will help uh, us in replicating when the target table doesn't have the same columns as the source table and also for the cases where the source table has some sensitive uh, information which they don't want to replicate to the subscriber so the last but not the least feature which we are discussing is in some way will help the conflict resolution on the subscriber as i have mentioned couple of times during this presentation as well that while applying the changes on the subscriber there is always a chance of constraint violation and this will allow the this will stop the replication 
as of now users can resolve the conflict manually by either removing the conflicting data or by skipping the transaction which caused conflict via pg replication at origin advance but both of these are options are not so easy for users to follow so the new option we are trying to provide to users is to specify the transaction id for which they want to skip the transaction on subscriber this option needs to be carefully used otherwise uh, users can uh, cause replica inconsistency and additionally we are planning to show the error transaction information via the stats view that will help users to easily identify the conflicting transactions so thanks you can contact me anytime at amit.kapila16@gmail.com so this is all uh, i have for today